All right, so the next few videos, <coughs> we're going to look at techniques for factoring. Okay? So the ability to factor is fairly important in calculus. There are going to be a number of situations where you need to figure out where a function or its derivative or its second derivative is equal to zero. Right? Um, those points where a derivative is equal to zero are very important. They have a name. They're called critical points. They come up quite frequently in a lot of optimization and applied problems involving calculus. Um, so you need to be able to figure out where functions are equal to zero. Uh, if they're polynomial or rational functions, that's going to involve a certain amount of factoring. Um, so basic step is you're looking at quadratics, OK? So you're looking at something that looks like ax squared plus bx plus c. And you want to factor this thing, right? And, and we know from the factor theorem, if we find those factors, that's the same thing as finding zeros, right? Um, so in some sense, we're trying to figure out where this, where this thing is equal to zero. Um, of course, the quadratic formula gives us one answer, right? So the quadratic formula says, oh yeah, we know exactly when this thing's going to be equal to 0, it's going to happen when x is equal to plus or minus, sorry, um, it's the trouble with quadratic formula. Sometimes you forget it. Minus b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a, right? So some people just say, oh yeah, remember the quadratic formula. <coughs> It'll give you the answer. It's not a nice formula, right? It's not great. Um, but it is a fail-safe. It's going to work in situations where you can't figure out the factors, probably because, well, there's a couple of possibilities. Quadratic might be irreducible. Right? It might not have any roots. It might not have factors. Um, it might be that that's as simplified as you can make it. Um, it might be that there are factors, but they're, they're irrational. And you're probably not going to be able to find those just by staring at it. Um, in those cases, the quadratic formula can bail you out, right? So for example, like if I were to just kind of write down some quadratic equation without thinking too hard about it, and say, okay, I want to I wanna solve that. Um, probably don't come up with factors right away, yeah? Right? Maybe there aren't any nice factors. So, if we needed to, we can fall back on the quadratic formula. We can say, oh yeah, so the roots are going to be, if they exist, minus b, so minus b is minus 5, plus or minus square root, minus 5 squared, minus 4, times 2, times 4. over 2 times 2. All right. And actually, this gives you the answer right away, because the first thing you do before you bother with any other simplifying is you look under that square root, and you say, OK, what do I have under that square root? Under that square root, 5 squared is 25. Subtract. 4 times 4 is 16 times 2 is 32. 25 minus 32 is less than 0, right? So I've got a negative number under the square root. That tells me there are no real number solutions, right? You can't take the square root of a negative number. So quadratic formula tells you there are no solutions to this equation, so there won't be any factors, right? Factor theorem tells you that. If there's no solutions, there's no factors. OK. So that's one case where you might need the quadratic formula. Another one might be, well, let's, let's say that this, this plus 4 was actually a minus 4, right? Minus 4. Well, now you're doing 25 plus 32. So now you'd say, OK, so I've got 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 plus 32 over 4. And this is a case where, yeah, there's not a lot of simplifying you're going to be able to do. So your answers are? 
that x is equal to 5 plus the square root of 57 over 4 and 5 minus the square root of 57 over 4. And so if we think of those as our values of a in the factor theorem, that tells me <coughs> that I could write 2x squared minus 5x minus 4. If I bring the 2 out front, I could write that as 2 times x minus 5 plus root 57 over 4, x minus 5 minus root 57 over 4, and okay, I factored my polynomial. That's not where we want to go, right? No, nobody likes doing this, right? Occasionally you got to do it, you got to use quadratic formula because there are solutions, but they're gross. That's probably not where you want to go. You're hoping that you've got rational or even better integer roots for your polynomial. So how do you, how do you work backwards? So let's say somebody gives you a polynomial like x squared minus 5x plus 6, and they say, okay, I want you to factor this thing. Okay. Well, um, one of the things we could do is we could fall back on, on rational roots theorem. Rational roots theorem says that, you know, possible factors, you know, I could have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 6. So I could have x plus or minus any of those numbers. And you can just try them and see if they work, right? You could use the, you could use the factor theorem, plug each of those numbers in, see if you get 0. Trial and error. But another way to do it is to say, well, let's suppose that this, you know, let's say I could factor it. So let's say I can factor this as, as x plus a times x plus b. All right? Or maybe you want to do x minus a, x minus b. Um, okay. So, well, then I can say, well, what do I get if I, if I multiply that out? So x times x, x squared x times a, x times b. So I have a x plus bx, I can write it like that, and then a times b, right? So if you compare the two, well then you realize that there's two things that have to happen. I need a times b to equal 6, I need a plus b to equal minus 5. So now you got to come up with two numbers. Two numbers that multiply to give you 6, and they add to give you minus 5. All right? So possibilities are going to be either 1 times 6 or 2 times 3. And, well, or minus 2 times minus 3, minus 1 times minus 6. All right? And of those possibilities, the only one that adds up to give you minus 5 would be a is minus 2, b is minus 3, right? Or I guess this could be minus 3, that could be minus 2, that doesn't matter. Um, so then we can say, oh yeah, so that means that I've got x squared minus 5x plus 6, and that's going to be equal to x minus 2 times x minus 3, right? That's, that's your, your sort of typical factoring scenario that you might be dealing with. Um, the only thing that might be a little bit more complicated is if you've got a coefficient in front of the x squared. Um, we're running a little long on time for this one, so let's try to do this one quickly. Um, so let's say I have something like 2x squared plus 3x plus 1, and I want to factor that, okay? Okay, um, so let's give this one a try. What are we going to do? Well, one of the things that you might try is first factor out that coefficient, right? Reduce it to a problem like the one that we just solved. The only catch is now there are some fractions in there. 3 halves plus 1 half, right? Which makes things maybe a little bit trickier. Um, but we, all, we already know from the, from the rational roots theorem that the only, the only 
factors would we be looking for? It could be plus or minus one or plus or minus one half, right? So we, we kind of have things narrowed down a little bit. So we think about, okay, we want to multiply to give one half, add to give three halves. Um, one times a half gives me a half. One plus a half gives me three halves, right? So you do that kind of, again, you're thinking about solving these equations. And so we say, okay, so x, so one times one half, right? So we can factor like that. Uh, if you, if you don't like that one half in there, you could always take this two. If you want to, you could take this two and you could put it back with that second factor and you could write it as x plus one times two x plus one if you don't like having the, the one half. Uh, the nice thing about having it this way though is now you know what the zeros are, minus one and minus one half. Those are your roots.